Evan Wells is going to demonstrate, and he does a much better job than me talking about it. Evan, please, pl pl please make him feel good by <laughs> acknowledging. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Jack. I'm going to start by loading a traditional dynamic map service. While I do this, watch the clock at the bottom of the map. It's showing that we're having about a two to four second refresh rate for this service. These are the same types of services that you're currently using. It's not cached. It's a dynamic service, which means for each pan, zoom, or update to the display, the database is being queried, the results rendered, and then passed back to the requesting application. Honestly, this is a little slower than what we'd like. So now, let me show you the new 931 optimized map service. Still dynamic, but now sub-second refresh rates. This dynamic service still queries the database, still renders those results and passes them back to the requesting application, but now those results are returned to us in less than a second. At 931, we continue to support cache map services. So if you have static data, or data that's updated infrequently, such as base map data, our, the cache map service may offer you faster throughput and increased scalability. Also, some of your organizations are still using ArcIMS. This ArcIMS service is querying the same data as our previous services. But if we compare, this ArcIMS service is refreshing at about one to two seconds, while the optimized map service was at sub-second rates. It may be worth considering upgrading the ArcGIS server to take advantage of the better cartography tools, better production tools, and now better performance. So let's take a look at how we created that optimized map service. There's two parts to an optimized map service. First, there's a set of tools that allow you to tune and optimize your map document. Next is a new graphics engine within ArcGIS Server. I'm going to start with the same map document I used to create our initial dynamic map service. You'll see we get about the same four second refresh rate as I zoom in. One, two, three, four. So what is it that's making our map slower? Well, first, we're using larger and larger data sets. In addition, we're using more complex symbology and labeling to make more appealing looking maps. Also, hardware is always a concern. But probably the most important factor is the trade-off between usability and performance. For example, ArcMap allows us to easily do projections on the fly. And this is fine for, for simple, a single desktop user. But once I start publishing those services and have multiple people hitting those, the refresh rate and the reprojecting starts paying the price and starts adding to our performance. So let's take a look at how we can tune this map document. I'm going to start by using our Analyze tool. This Analyze tool presents us with a number of warnings and errors on how we can better optimize our map document. First, I have a number of projection suggestions and issues. I'll also get warnings on things like layers that don't have spatial indexes, or that are referencing personal geodatabases, or even things like using UNC path names. So let's go through and correct some of these warnings and suggestions. For the projections, what I'm going to do is change the projection of my data frame to match the projection that's most common throughout my data sets. Simply doing this will already start reducing my number of warnings. However, I still have a few projection issues. So I'm gonna, what I should do is reproject those layers. However, for the sake of time, I'm simply going to remove those layers and turn on layers that already have correctly projected data. Now let's look at our last high severity warning. It's showing that one of our layers does not have a spatial index. To fix this, I'm simply going to right click on that warning and choose Add Spatial Index. Right from there, I can launch the geoprocessing tool that will add that spatial index. Finally, let's look at some of our errors. These errors are showing that I have some layers with broken data sources. Again, I'm going to right-click on the error, but this time, I'm going to choose Select Layer and Table of Contents. This is a quick and easy way to determine which layer is generating the error. And what I can see is that I have a number of leftover layers that were there from when I was doing some interim analysis. I'm going to remove those since they're no longer needed. And by doing this, once I reanalyze, you'll see that I've completely eliminated my errors and greatly reduced my warnings. And you'll see I've already reduced my refresh rate to about a second or two. <laughs> the, 
The second part of an optimized map service is the new graphics engine with an ArcGIS server. From ArcMap, we can get preview this service, so we can get a feel for what it will look like with this graphics engine, and also an idea of what our refresh rate will be. Now let's go ahead and choose Publish to Server. This will allow us to go ahead and create our new optimized map service. Once I have this service created, I can use a simple JavaScript viewer to go ahead and get a preview of, what this, of this service. So I've already got that published now. With the release of 9.3.1, ESRI is also trying to help educate our users on the best practices for publishing services. What we found is that users typically have two types of layers. They have operational layers, the data that they're editing, they're analyzing, the data that they're focused on, and then base map or background data. This is the data that sets the scene and setting for your operational layers. It gives them additional context. In this scenario, what we're going to do is create a a rate calculator between metro stops. To do this, I created two services. First, for my operational layers, my metro routes and stops, I created a dynamic service. I used a dynamic service so that I can ensure that we were querying the database and getting the most up-to-date rate and schedule information every time there was a request. For my base map data, I had a couple of choices. I could either use my cache map services or the new streamline map services. By following these best practices, I, was able, I can then easily mash up my operational layers with, with whatever base map data we choose. So I can either use the base map that we just published or another service, such as ArcGIS Online Street Maps or imagery services. Let's go ahead and take a look at this application. This web application was created using ArcGIS Server's Silverlight API. Let's go ahead and turn on our operational layers. Once we do that, we can zoom in and calculate the rate and travel time between stations. But what we really want to look at is our base map data. I'm currently using the service we just created. However, I can easily switch to another service, such as Microsoft Virtual or Streets. Or if we want to allow the user as they zoom in, they can turn on their imagery services. The power in following these best practices is that we can create a map, publish it once, and have it reused by many applications. So what we've looked at today are three things. First, the new 931 optimized map service. Next, how to tune and publish that service. And finally, how at 931 we can make reusable map services even more powerful. Thank you. <laughs>